Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Happy Friday and day three of Vlogmas. Today I thought it would be fun to chat about some of the most popular questions I get asked as an encaustic artist. The number one question I get asked in some form or another is basically, how did you make that? It could be as simple as asking about a specific painting, how I made a specific painting or instructions on a specific painting, or it could be along the lines of a specific technique, or even if I have in-person classes or any online classes for encaustic. Most recently, somebody asked me for specific instructions on day 21 of one of the mini explorations. So that particular painting has sold and I do have a small short mini video on that, which I'll link up there somewhere. But um, to answer the question, I don't have any specific instructions, but I am going to walk you through later in the video two different ways in which I collage. So that will hopefully answer a few of those questions. And while I don't have any set specific instructions on any particular painting, I do offer quite a few behind the scenes glimpses at me painting these paintings where you can pick up several different tips, tricks, um, advice, things like that. And I don't offer specific instructions on how to paint an exact painting for a couple different reasons. They may not be the reasons you are thinking. Um, I don't certainly don't ever mind somebody taking my techniques and using them as their own. I did not invent most of these techniques. I am just um, experimenting around and using them as I see fit or how I would like to use them. So definitely feel free to take any of these techniques and your hands and your artistic voice is going to speak something totally different than mine is. So feel free to use whatever you would like to use. So back to my reasoning on not providing specific instructions with these paintings. Um, the first one is half the time, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I mean, I know what I'm doing, but I'm literally just experimenting working very intuitively and I'm not, I don't have a set plan or set instructions on how I specifically create paintings. I'm very much a go with the flow type of person when it comes to creating. The other reason is I don't want you to ever feel like you have to create a certain way. I don't want you to follow these step by step instructions. I feel like that is not, um, how the creative process works. So I want you to really take these techniques and experiment with them and make them your own, do your own thing with them. And I'm afraid if I provided step one, use this paint, step two, put a piece of paper down, that it would be very, um, it, things would come out exactly similar or, or the same. And it, it would just, it takes away from the creative process. It takes away from your creative voice. That's what I'm trying to say. It takes away from your creative voice because we each have our own creative voices and I don't want you to feel like you're stuck in a box here. So all that being said, if you ever have any questions at all, definitely reach out via email, drop me a comment below in the comment box. I am open to answering anything and everything I can answer. The only things I will not share are specific techniques that I learned from different instructors that kind of created, if you will, or are experts with these techniques. And I took a class from them and I don't feel comfortable sharing their secrets because that's, I paid for that and that's how they are making their um, living. That's how they're using their creative voice. Now I will also always recommend um, if, if you're asking about a certain technique that I learned from somebody else, I will definitely share where I learned that, how you can get access to that information because I do think it's important and um, these artists are sharing their te techniques very willingly and openly. So um, that's the only thing that I don't um, want to share 
with you because I did not create these, some of these techniques. One last uh, point before I kind of let this question, how did you make that go, um, about in-person classes or online classes. As of right now, I do not offer any of them. Um, will I in the future? I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, I know in-person classes are really difficult when I have a studio out of my house. Um, one, there I'm working with open flame and or a hot heat gun, both of which can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And also, since we're, I'm out of my house, um, I'm not sure how liability would work there. So um, I don't offer any in-person classes at the moment and I don't offer any online classes. And going forward in the future, I might. Um, I will definitely keep you posted if I ever do decide to do that and change my mind. Um, but in the meantime, like I said, just ask me anything you have a question on. I am more than happy to walk you through the process. Another question I get asked a lot is how do I see your art in person? And this is a little bit tricky and that, again, I'm out of our house. So what I'm happy to do is if you're in Northeast Ohio, um, because I don't have any upcoming shows, um, in-person art shows or art festivals coming up, it is going to be the middle of winter here pretty soon. But because I don't have any of those, and if you're in Northeast Ohio, I am more than happy to meet you at a cafe or someplace like that if you're interested in a specific piece or want to see a couple different pieces in person. Now, if you're not in Northeast Ohio, it's a little bit trickier um, in that I'm probably not going to fly to, say, California with a piece of artwork to show you a piece of artwork in person. But what I can and have done in the past is take a lot more pictures, shoot some video, really try to give you a better feel for what the piece looks like, um, especially if it's one of my bigger pieces. And speaking of bigger pieces. No, I do not have them on the website. Yes, I am hoping to have them on the website come the beginning of the year. Um, they are a little bit trickier to ship, um, but I can definitely do that and have done that in the past. So again, if you see a larger piece that I've either painted here on YouTube or um, seen something on Instagram, you can definitely leave me a comment on that and I can send you some more pictures and also the price on those. All of those big pieces I did take to the shows, so I don't have all of them left because quite a few of them sold. Thank you for that guys, whoever bought one, thank you. Um, but if you are interested, like I said, I'm happy to send more pictures, video, things like that because I know it can be difficult to make a pretty major purchase without actually seeing something in person. The third and final question I'll touch on before I start showing you the collage process is commissions or custom paintings. Do I paint custom paintings? And the answer is yes, with a little bit of a caveat. <laughs> the caveat is I do a lot of landscapes, abstract collages, things like that. I don't do portraits or pets or um, people's houses necessarily, although I have done doors. Um, so I do definitely am interested and like doing custom artwork or commissions. But um, if you've seen my work or kind of take a peruse through my website, just kind of get a feel for what I do so that we are both on the same page. And um, I'm, I'm probably not gonna paint like your mom or your grandma or your, your favorite pet. Um, it's just not in my wheelhouse and there are people that do it so much better than I do. So if you're interested, definitely reach out, send me an email and we can discuss um, sizing, pricing, all of that good stuff. Now that I answered some of the most popular questions that I get asked, let's get to the painting portion of the video where I'm going to show you two different ways that I collage. Okay, I thought I'd go over a quick, couple of quick supplies for encaustic collage. Um, the first thing, oops, sorry about that noise. The first thing is a heat gun. I prefer a heat gun over a torch. 
when doing encaustic collage because I'm typically using papers and things that could easily catch on fire and this won't have a flame coming out of it. Now a word of caution, you definitely still have to be careful because this gets very, very hot after you use it. So be careful where you put it down at. Then the other thing I have used in the past is a metal spoon. And this is nice because you could heat up this metal portion of the spoon with the heat gun and then rub this down over the encaustic papers and that will melt the encaustic just a little bit enough to adhere it. Now, the thing with the metal spoons is you wanna make sure that this is nice and smooth. You don't have to use a spoon. I just happened to get this at the thrift store for like 99 cents or something even less expensive than that. What you wanna do is just make sure whatever you're using is a nice smooth surface and doesn't have a sharp pointy edge or anything like that to it so that you don't get any marks in your encaustic that you don't want when you're rubbing over it. And then of course a griddle, which I have heated up to 150 degrees. And then on the griddle, I have a jar of encaustic medium, just plain old clear encaustic medium. And I have some white paint. Now you could use any other color of paint that you want. I'm just keeping it nice and simple today. This iron is something new-ish to me. Um, it's great for encaustic collage. If you have an iron, then you don't need a metal spoon. So I'm gonna show you both ways. Um, so if you, you know, there's no need to run out and buy this iron. Um, it comes in handy if you're going to be doing a lot of encaustic collage, but I would say try it out with the spoon and heat gun first. This is what I've used for several years now and it's worked out great. Okay, so we touched on the encaustic tools for collage and then up next, I'm gonna talk about collage papers and what you can collage onto. So uh, first, let's talk about what you can collage onto. Today, I'm just going to be using some uh, watercolor and mixed media paper that this already has the encaustic medium on it. I don't know if you can hear that, but it has encaustic medium on it. It's already kind of squeaky. And so this will work great. You could also use mat board, you could use cradle boards, whatever is an absorbent surface is what you can use. But for today, I'm just gonna be using these two pieces. And I specifically chose these because they already have a background to them. And I wanna show you what happens when you apply encaustic to some collage papers. So then you need, of course, your collage papers. And this, I wanted to show you what happens. So with encaustic, when you apply, and this has encaustic medium on it already, it's kind of squeaky there. When you apply encaustic medium to a thin piece of paper, that thin piece of paper becomes very see-through. So I hope the camera is picking up on it, but this was an old uh, book page, pattern book page. And if you can, I hope you can see that. This is the front of the page, but on the back of the page, it has writing. So what has happened is because it's become see-through, that writing is now backwards. So if I flip this over, here's the writing on that side and get the camera to focus here. So you can see it's now obviously going in the right direction, but the back of the page, <laughs> now that writing is backwards again. So um, just a word of caution, it can be interesting or you know, depending on the effect that you want, but those thin pages do become see-through. Another thing that happens when you put encaustic medium on is it can change the coloring. So this has encaustic medium on it, this does not. You can see this is a very cr much a creamier color, more of a uh, beige-ish color than this initial piece of paper. So just again, a word of caution, it may change color. And now you might be thinking, okay, fine, I'll just use some thicker material. Like, hopefully you can hear that. This is cardboard. This is a thicker vintage postcard material. Here is some cardboard from an old vintage packing. I have a lot of vintage materials 
and then another vintage postcard. So yes, the thicker material should in theory not be a see-through. The downside to using a thicker material is you really have to make sure you embed it into the wax. And so you might have to have a thicker base layer of wax, which I'll show you here in a minute once we get to demoing. But these will require more wax or something else to stick them down, perhaps a brad or a nail or things like that. Think outside of the box, but these will require, if you're just wanting to use encaustic medium, more wax to stick them down, or rather a thicker wax layer initially to stick them down. One last tip before we get started. This is a photograph that I printed out onto a piece of paper. So the, with a photograph, if you want to keep um, it thinner so you don't have to put as much wax down, I would recommend printing them out onto just a plain old piece of paper. This I actually have coffee stained and tea stained on it, but um, then you don't have to worry about really applying a lot of wax to it. Again, remember this will become see-through. So, um, you know, pros and cons to both. And now moving on to the collage process. I like to lay my collage papers right down on the griddle and apply some encaustic medium directly on the griddle to them. This ensures two things. First, that the encaustic medium is heated up on the paper so you don't have to fuse it again. And then second also ensures that the encaustic medium is spread out all over the collage paper. Up next, I'm just heating up that collage surface a bit. Um, it's cooled and like I said, it already has encaustic medium on it. So I want to heat it up just a little bit so that I can then add one, some more paint to it. And this opaque white I'm doing um, so you can see later on down the road how things become a little bit see-through in areas and a little less in other areas. And again, just heating that up, making sure everything is nice and warm before I lay down this collage photo. And here I'm just pressing really lightly into the photo and making sure it's down in all areas. And then here I'm using that metal spoon, which I've heated up with the heat gun to really secure that down. And again, I go over this with another layer of clear encaustic wax to make sure it's completely embedded. You can always scrape back that wax later on in the process, but you really wanna make sure it's embedded in and it's not gonna come up later on down the road after you've collaged over it with other things. So you don't want your whole collage to fall apart. And then once that wax is cooled off, it doesn't, it becomes less opaque and more clear. And again, just putting some opaque paint over this layer. And I'm going to be doing the same exact thing with this piece, figuring out where I want it. And then adding a little bit more collage medium underneath it, or rather encaustic medium underneath it, just to make sure that has a nice surface to get fused to. The key when using the heat gun and the metal spoon is to constantly be moving that heat gun around so you're not over fusing in one area, creating either a wax puddle or a divot in the collage. Just really move that around a lot and it'll be great. Up next, we're starting with the iron and I have the iron already heated up. And so again, this piece of collage already has encaustic medium over it and so does the paper underneath that I'm collaging it too. And this, you just simply take this warm iron, rub it over the top and the wax surfaces fuse together. It's a really simple, easy process. Again, you don't wanna overheat, so don't leave the iron in one spot for too long, but it's it's really, it's quite a bit easier, honestly, than the, um, heat gun and the spoon. Now here I'm going to show you, this is that thicker piece of cardboard. So I'm applying some encaustic medium to it, a little bit more encaustic medium to the collage surface, and then I'm going to fuse both of them together or attempt to fuse both of them together with the iron. Right after I apply a little bit more medium and you will see that the iron really doesn't fuse the two together. It just heats up the top layer, but it doesn't heat up the layer underneath. So this is where you really need 
to make sure you have quite a bit of encaustic wax down to embed that in and then use the heat gun to fuse the layers. You can't really use the iron to fuse the layers together. And a little secret that I do is some wax paper. Wax paper will save your hands from the wax and it will also save the collage material. So if you kind of press that down with the spoon and the wax paper over it, it works beautifully. Okay, these are by no means finished pieces, but I wanted to point out a couple of things. So I don't know if you can tell right in here where I put that white wax underneath it, it becomes less see-through or rather the paper is still see-through, but because there's white wax there, it doesn't look see-through. So you can see up here, you can see the pattern of this underneath there. But this where I put the opaque paint, now you wouldn't have to use white, you could use any opaque um, encaustic paint down there but that makes the area less see-through. So something to keep in mind. And then you can see with this thicker pieces of paper, you really do have to build up those edges for it to completely um, adhere down. And then the same thing over here. This is where some white is in, and this is a little less see-through because the pattern, uh, this pattern is actually on the back side of the paper. So um, again, kind of an interesting effect of where the writing is um, showing through to the back side, if that makes sense. I hope I'm explaining that right. But um, yes, by no means done, but hopefully that gave you some different collage techniques and maybe answered a couple encaustic collage questions that you might have had. This is where I'm going to leave you today for this video. Hopefully that answered a few collage questions. If you have any other questions, definitely, like I said before, feel free to reach out. I am happy to answer anything and everything that I can. Um, and maybe going forward in the future, I'll do another Q&A video. Um, I will always, of course, respond back to your email or respond back to the comment down below if you do reach out. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll do a future question and answer video. All right, if you've been here for a while, you know the drill. <laughs> if you liked the video, give it a great big thumbs up. I so much appreciate it, and it really does help me out. If you aren't subscribed and would consider doing so, that would also be very, very much appreciated. Most likely, I will see you tomorrow for another Vlogmas, but just in case, if you hit that bell down there, that will notify you every time I release a new video. Again, thanks so very much for coming along. We'll talk to you soon and bye for now.